Hey guys, welcome to Jen's Creativity Corner. Today's video is going to be a testing a contraption thing. I found this set of three bread baking tubes at a thrift store a while back and I figured they were kind of gimmicky but I wanted to try them out and I thought it would be a fun one to share with you guys. Um, so they each come with two little end caps that you'll see and um, you can bake different types of breads like yeasty breads or like quick rice, <laughs> think about the name, um, like banana bread, zucchini bread, those kind of things that do not have yeast in them. So anyway, on to that footage, I'll show you how it worked out and if I think they're worthwhile. I've mentioned a couple times before that I have a culinary arts degree, which is totally true. I graduated in 2005 with an associates in culinary arts. And then like six months later, I left the restaurant I was working at and have never done professional cooking since. Um, I just realized it wasn't my passion, but I loved the creative and the decorative side of the food industry and cooking. Sorry if you can hear that motorcycle. I just moved to a new place. I didn't realize how noisy it was in the middle of the day, so maybe I have to go back to filming at like 3 in the morning. Yay! <laughs> so I am not a huge baker. I think a big thing about it is a lot of baked goods you can get relatively cheap without having to put in the effort and also it's more of a science than it is an art and I'm more of an artsy person I like decorating the cake but you know making the bread and making sure the yeast is the right temperature and the right amount of gluten development like that kind of stuff I find it fascinating but I don't love doing it practically all the time so I am NOT a baker that's my disclaimer going into this. Um, so, you know, my opinion of it might be a little bit different than yours, but I'll try to be thorough about that. Since this video is about the tubes and not so much bread recipes, I'm not really gonna go into depth on the recipes. Honestly, I didn't even go with any tried and true ones. I just Googled them. But I started off by making uh, what I call a white bread, but honestly, I had like two and a little bit of a cup of flour and the recipe called for up to three cups. And I did have some rye flour available. Now this is important, rye does not have as much gluten as all-purpose flour, so that's something to consider um, where these acted a little bit differently. <laughs> so I did two batches of yeast bread and I'll try to kind of cover those thoroughly for you here. After kneading the bread for a while, then we are going to take and let it have its first rising for an hour in a nice warm place. So I put it in a greased bowl, cover it up, and then the tubes you'll see here, they have a cap at each end, though I learned that some are a little more loose and some are a little tricky to get on, but they're all the same size to fit the three tins. And you are going to want to grease them up. Just use a little bit of spray. And then after an hour of rising, We'll go ahead and shape them. There's not a whole lot of shaping you need to do. Just get them to be little blobs, <laughs> tubes, I guess, um, little cylinders. Put them in there, cap them, put them in a warm place to rise for about a, another half hour. They didn't rise up that much though. And I think part of it is the gl gluten. Um, and maybe I just should have doubled the recipe, but there's a caveat to that I'll share later. Either way, I put them on a pan. I bake them in the oven according to directions. And then once I get them out, I take off the top lid immediately so some of the steam can rise. But just like any loaf of bread, you're going to leave it in for just a few minutes, just like a couple minutes probably for this size. And then you'll go ahead and take them out. And they came out actually pretty darn easy as you can see here. So let them cool on a cookie rack or a baker's rack and then they will be tasty to cut later. You'll want to make sure they're nice and cool. The rye bread is a little dense, which I actually prefer for these little sandwiches because it's not very crumbly and it's not like a really strong rye taste. It's mostly all purpose flour. So I feel like this was definitely a win. So back to the part where I said I did two different types. Now you can see on the right, this was the rye bread. I didn't really intentionally go for that, but it was just what I had handy. When I realized that these we made such short loaves, I thought, well, maybe we need to double it. And my friend thought, well, maybe we need to lay them on their sides. 
and so we decided to do a second batch though I realized well you know what since I ran out of all-purpose flour I grabbed some more all-purpose flour and did another batch I did a double batch and that's when I realized it has a lot more to do with the gluten <laughs> than just the amount because this recipe rose like a champ and rose like way too much of a champ um, at least a couple times they popped open <laughs> and they were just you know just expanding way too much I also didn't need it as much so the gluten development wasn't quite as much there because um, I felt like they were a little crumbly but either way they came out all right they were a little harder to get out of the tubes I put them back in the oven to get a little crispness and there was plenty of dough left over for some rolls when I made that double recipe so you know I don't have the perfect mix I, I do like the rye bread but maybe I would have to double it if it has the rye because then there's not as much expansion I don't know I will still have to play around with this but just something to consider if you have a favorite recipe if you have some troubles just play with it a little bit if you are more like me and all about quick breads because well they're quick <laughs> you don't have to worry about yeast being too hot or too cold um, you can certainly make zucchini bread or I had some old ripe bananas so just making some recipe I googled I didn't even do my mom's I don't know why anyway <laughs> um, making it as per the recipe you might notice here that I actually have parchment paper at the bottom of the tubes this time especially for the quick bread it's going to be helpful so you don't have any leakage and of course you will spray them down and cover them and bake them just like you did for the yeast bread and then you can use a long wooden skewer or even an uncooked spaghetti noodle to be able to test down there because that toothpick is not going to tell you <laughs> if the middle is raw so this was not done yet I put it back in and then I got a little distracted so they definitely got more brown than I would have liked now it also did not rise to the top so a double recipe would probably be called for but these start down you know besides a little bit of little bit of dark flavor <laughs> um, it was really good and it'd be good with Nutella or let's be honest banana bread on its own it's just good or a little butter or something but I figure minus the user error they were a success they made cute little shapes that would be great with a little cup of tea did I love them? Did I make it clear whether or not I love them? I think that they are not nearly as useless as I thought they were. Um, I actually have a Polish tea set, Polish pottery that I brought back from Poland. And I really want to do tea parties where I can have cute little sandwiches because that's way more cute than just cutting up little squares or using French bread, Christini or something. So they're fun. I'm going to be keeping these. I thought that I would probably just donate them afterwards, but I think I will be keeping them. Uh, also, my friend, I did the testing at her place and left her kids with some bread for sandwiches, for school lunches, and they loved that. So definitely fun for kids. If you are a baker and you're already making bread, it's not that much harder to figure these out. I would say it's a fun addition. It does take up space, but it's a fun addition. Um, if you are not a baker, uh, I don't know that this will, it's not gonna be easier. It might make you wanna bake more because it's fun <laughs> and cute things are fun. I really enjoyed um, for a couple days afterwards just making myself little sandwiches and I'm, you know, a big kid at heart, I guess. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me here on Jen's Creativity Corner. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please give it a subscribe and a thumbs up. Um, I will have a link to these on Amazon. I found the exact same set and uh, you can purchase them down below in my store. It supports me when you shop through my store, even if you need to go buy other things. If you click on that link and then go and search things um, that help support me. And I appreciate that so much. I love you guys. Um, I am excited by how this channel is growing. We're kind of slow and steady, but that's okay. The more you share, the more we can grow together. And I'm hoping at 2,500 subscribers to do a giveaway. So a little motivation. Find a video, if not this one, another one to share. And um, maybe we can get there sooner. Anyway, I'm being really talkative. Sorry about that. This is more informative than chit chat. If you want chit chat, that's my vlog channel. Okay, I'm stopping. I'm done plugging. I hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time. Bye.